This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com forward slash forge. Welcome back to Montana. Today we're joined by Sam and his lovely dog Bella. And Sam gave me a really good idea when I got here, which was to try and make Damascus steel and infuse copper into it. Uh, the past year and a half or so, I've been seeing a lot more people put non-ferrous metals mixed in with their Damascus. And it's been a really cool trend to see what people do with it. Absolutely mind-boggling stuff. It, it doesn't make any sense, because we're talking steel, which doesn't melt very easily, and copper, which does melt very easily. Exactly. So how does it work? I don't know exactly but we're gonna give it a shot. So for us to find out how we can put copper into Damascus steel, we need to make the Damascus steel first, so we're gonna use the Chambersburg, which now sports a mustache. I believe that's your, your doing. Hey, that was there when I got here. So at last, I'm reunited with this old friend and we get to make some Damascus. Right, so we started making the Damascus, but then I got lazy. I'm very embarrassed to say I started doing what I knew I shouldn't have started doing. To build up the layer count for this steel Damascus that we were gonna then put the copper into, I did a hot cut fold and re-weld. And it worked fine for the first few, but then eventually it didn't weld. I couldn't get the surfaces clean enough while I folded it over hot. The weld didn't take and we have ended up with a billet of steel that is cracked really badly. So in my rush to try and make as much progress as possible and get to experimenting with this copper Damascus, I have been bit by my own ticks and fleas, which means that a day is wasted, but on the bright side it means that we now get to do something that I don't usually do, recycling. Here in this shop, we've got billets of Damascus dating all the way back to the rapier, which is either 2017 or 2018. And I believe this might have been from the Zweihander that we made with Will's help. And it is exactly what we want for this experiment. It's Twist Damascus. And so for us to rush through, I'm gonna pass this to Sam. I'd love for you to forge that down into a little bit of a thinner bar and clean it up. And while you do that, with the hope of stacking your material in between some copper to create this sandwich, I'm gonna try and prove the concept of actually welding the copper to the steel so that we don't mess it up on that very valuable bit of Damascus. So I'm about to make my stack with just the regular steel. Sam has got his material ready. He's gonna go like this. Steel, copper, steel, copper, steel. He's gonna TIG around or MIG around the seams so that we hold it all together. I'll do much the same with mine. And since mine is the considerably cheaper and easier to replicate one, we'll start by trying to forge weld mine. All right, this is Sam's billet. One of the things Erica Finch's forge told us was it's nice to have a little window to look at the copper so it's unwelded at the back so we can see when that copper looks a little sticky. I did the same thing on mine, but to save welding so much, I actually covered the sides with some steel plates. You can see my little window to the copper right there. We'll start with mine. The forge is a little chillier than normal. I think we'll be using the Aniang, the 165 Aniang, forge this. And the basic game plan in my head is get this material to the point that the little copper I can see looks sticky. It looks a little sticky, a little liquidy. I don't want it to be dribbling out, but I want it to be a little sticky. And then we take it to the power hammer, we give it a few light blows, we give it another heat, back and forth and back and forth. It's not gonna be welding. I think the technical term is more fusing, and this copper should be acting as an adhesive between the other bits of steel, or, in the billet that Sam has, the other bits of Damascus steel. Let's see if we can put copper in steel Damascus. Whoa, here we go! Oh, it's definitely sticky! Ah! 
Right, back to the forge. So getting the material to stick is one thing. What's gonna be a bigger question that we've got to answer is can we forge steel stuck to copper without it tearing apart because of how differently the two materials are gonna to react to temperature. The steel's gonna be a lot harder than the copper, so when we hammer it, what happens? <laughs> Solid. Found some molten copper on the sow block of the Ain Yang. Isn't that funny? Do you want to give your billet a try? Sure. We can work both at the same time. Just take it nice and easy. I'm gonna see if I can really start forging mine. Okay, this needs to cool down so we can grind off the jacket before we move further. I presume we want the jacket off before we do any twisting. You see that like top bit of the top layer of copper? It's getting shiny and dribbly. I think it's go time. Oh yes! That's definitely hot enough. Ah! Ow! <laughs> oh no! Your weld fell off. That weld just split. Oh well, see what happened. Now you can really see how the different metals are interacting. Yeah, look at that copper. It's really spread out there. This is where I got sprayed with the molten copper. It's wild that it's completely cracked open that weld bead. I just think it's because that copper is shifting and moving differently than the yeah. steel. That's so strange. We'll see what happens in the next heat. Look at that copper just like spilling out. It's oozing. Uh oh, no! <laughs> I saw that. Uh, you might be able to pry it out. Get a chisel in there. <laughs> God, that's annoying. You gotta see this thing when it's in the forge though. Like these little pieces out on the edge start to melt before the core. And so that's when I've been pulling it out. All of this is from the copper squidging out more than the steel. That's so funny. All right, so we've got my piece, Sam's piece. We need to see what it looks like within. So I'm gonna cut the jacket off mine. We're gonna trim around Sam's and cut the jacket off it and see what we've got. Oh my goodness, that is so cool. That is just so, so cool. That copper is so squished, it is unbelievable. Maybe that's just because it's the end of the bar, but I hope it's not like that the whole way through. I'm gonna put it in the middle to get rid of the jacket. You doing a test etch? Yes. So I just mixed up a little water and ferric, did a simple bevel, and that's what we got. I can't believe it, it's incredible. I think we actually did it. That is unreal. Well, apparently you can stick copper between bits of Damascus. Right, I'm gonna forge it into an octagon, then round it so we can twist it. See if it twists and doesn't just fall apart. Oh no, no, look at it. It's definitely falling apart. Oh. Yeah, it just doesn't have the strength to withstand twisting. It will forge and stick together, but it just can't withstand these forces. Oh, wow. Well, we have one spectacular failure. One successful piece. We can't twist copper fused to steel Damascus, but by goodness can we do some cool San Maya with copper in there. Thank you so much for your help today, Sam. Really appreciate it. Lovely work on that. What do you guys think we should make out of this copper and Damascus steel bit of steel? 
let us know down below. This episode has been sponsored by Squarespace. It's a website building platform that I've been using for years and years, and I actually recently just built another website for this new hobby and passion of mine of dog training and dog sports. While I've been here in the US, I completed in a trial with my dog Crazy. We got a PDC in the sport of PSA. I also took a dog trainer's course with Bart and Michael Bellin. So it didn't take me just a few seconds to update my website. And that's why Squarespace is so incredible because you control it all. You'll never have any plugins, patches, or upgrades ever. You can choose from countless themes that scale beautifully from mobile to PC. And as your business develops and changes, you can modify it to your heart's content. Then monetizing your Squarespace website couldn't be easier because you can sell unlimited products, physical or digital. You can sell access to members only content through Squarespace member areas. If you've got a brick and mortar store, use Squarespace point of sale and use Squarespace scheduling to book consultations. The opportunities are limitless, so please go to squarespace.com forward slash forge, get yourself a free 14 day trial and then use code forge at checkout for 10% off your first purchase. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.